History of Psychopathy and Serial Killers The term serial killers was first known as serial murders. Serial murders is defined as an unlawful killing of two or more victims by the same offender in separate events. It was first coined by Robert Russell, an FBI agent in the 1970s. What he did was play a significant role in psychological profiling of violent offenders. Now, with psychoplastiche, also known as psychopathy, it was coined by J.L.A. Kosh in 1888. And what he Characteristics of a psychopathy serial killer. The identified traits of a psychopath in an individual include lacking an emotional response, the individual lacks to have any sort of empathy, having poor behavioral control such as having expressions of threats, verbal abuse, impatience, and lack of being able to control anger, there is a drive for sensation seeking and no sense of remorse when committing a crime. The individual also has a drive of impulsiveness and predatory behavior. The traits also include charisma, manipulation, and violence to control the victim upon their own selfish needs. Famous Psychopath Serial Killer One of the most famous serial killers is known to be Ted Bundy pictured on the right side. He is known to be one of the master manipulators who kidnapped, raped, and killed over 30 women. According to the article profile of a serial killer, it states Bundy made a mockery of law enforcement running rings around their attempts to catch the world's first serial killer, Biographics 2018. This shows how he liked using manipulation and mind games to mess with law enforcement in order to gain a sense of power and status in society. He wanted everyone to know who he was and what he had done and was proud of his actions. Relation between serial killers and intelligence FBI assessment came to the conclusion that organized serial killers were, in fact, highly intelligent. 303 serial killers' IQs were extracted and more valid associations among intelligence, methodology, and motivation to serial kill. Methodology was organized versus disorganized. They would be grouped as either organized or disorganized based on the crime scene characteristics. Motivation was financial and enjoyment. Primary motivations to serial kill were either enjoyment of killing, which was 36%, or financial gain, which was 30.2%. Enjoyment categories were enjoyment rape, 70%, and enjoyment no rape was 20.5%. Mask of Sanity Written by Hervey M. Cleckley Hervey M. Cleckley was both a psychiatrist and a writer whose main focus was psychopathy. The concept of the book was interviewing and conducting studies on psychopaths that were placed in mental institutes. Cleckley's goal was to uncover psychopaths' social masks because they knew how to cover their disorders and personalities within our society. The book is known to hold great status in 20th century in regards to influential description of psychopathy and is still relevant in today's psychology aspect. James Fallon James Fallon is a neuroscientist. Some of his most famous work is on identifying psychopathic killers through brain scans and gene variants, tested through a double-blinded experiment. While conducting research, his curiosity took an unexpected turn. As he published his work, he found several psychopathic killers in his own family tree. The real shock came when he made a discovery in his very own gene patterns. The joke was on me, he says. It turned out I was the ruffian. I have the exact brain patterns of a psychopathic killer. He published a book in 2013 titled, The Psychopath Inside a Neuro Neuroscientist's Personal Journey into the Dark Side of the Brain. In his book, Fallon explains that it takes more than gene patterns to develop a serial killer. Nurture variables such as positive childhood experiences and the absence of violence and traumas is why he isn't a psychopathic killer himself. Psychopathy, Serial Killers in Today's Society Pedro Alonso Lopez Credited as one of the most prolific serial killers of modern time, Pedro A. Lopez's victims list is in the high 300 or 400s. He targeted victims, raping a majority of them, killing them, and leaving a trail across Peru, Ecuador, and Colombia. His first acts of murder was during his first imprisonment, killing four men who abused him sexually. Later, it was ruled as self-defense. He stated in a prison interview that he enjoyed wrapping his hands around the necks of young children and admitted he would return to his killing spree when released from prison. 
He was arrested a handful of times, yet shockingly released for good behavior, later mentioned to be for bail money.